All right, everybody, welcome to today's webinar. We're so excited you're here. Thanks for joining us today and uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule to be with us. We've got a fantastic webinar today titled Leveraging uh, Your Reviews on Your Website to Convert More Leads. We're gonna talk about how to get more reviews, why that's critical, and then also how to use them to actually generate more leads and cases for your firm. And we're so excited you're joining us today. Um, first thing we wanna do is introduce our, uh, our beautiful and wonderful panelists, and also Mike. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> so uh, first we have Nalini Prasad from Blue Shark Digital. Um, you can see Nalini's bio there. I'm sure you've seen her speak at various legal events. Um, she's the chief strategy officer at Blue Shark and is an act, a true expert on um, all things digital marketing associated with law firms. And then we have Mike Mellis, who's the director of business development at Connect. Um, he's worked with a lot of law firms, hundreds of them to help them improve their processes around review generation and review management. So you've got two experts on the call today uh, that I think will be able to help us um, unpack this a little more because I think, you know, as we were talking about this topic, Mike and Nalini, one of the things that kept coming up is, okay, if people know they should, and maybe they know how to generate reviews, but actually knowing what to do with those, I think is, is really critical and, and super important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, glad to be here. Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks excited for, for this. Good. Well, thanks for going. Let's let's keep moving through the slides, Mike. I know you're you're uh, kind of running that. So let's actually talk about getting reviews first, because you know figuring out what to do with them is all well and good, but if you don't have enough, that is that's the first problem. So and what we're finding too, and I don't know if you guys have seen this as well, Mike and Nalini, but we see a lot of people, law firms particularly, that don't have enough reviews. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we see that a ton on our side as we're working with with new clients. Um, when they come to us with, um, I think they've they've taken kind of the organic strategy of hope to kind of just hope that um, the best clients will leave reviews, which just oftentimes doesn't pan out, and they tend to have a few reviews, some of which are you know the customer, so you don't want leaving reviews for you, so. Right. And I, I see that a lot, too, in the very beginning. You know, people are coming to me because they're very at the beginning of learning about what can I do online. And so most of the people that I see are not only that they have very few reviews, but the very few reviews that they do have are very negative. And so it's Absolutely. about how can I get more of them? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Because the people that are really passionate about it are the unless you're asking them and actively soliciting them, which is what Mike's going to get into. Uh, usually the ones that are actually leaving you re the reviews are the angry ones. So. Yeah. You've oh, got to take be really the time proactive. out of their day to leave them. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, if you're exactly. not proactive, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Well, let's dive yeah. into that, Mike, and talk through that. Yeah. And I think um, one of the first things I think that would be probably a little helpful just to get started is to talk about, you know, why do, why do reviews even matter? Um, Pew Research did a study a little, you know, a, just a, a little bit ago. And one of the things they found is that 81% of your clients are going to look at reviews as a first step in choosing what, what firm they're going to use to, to help solve their issue. Um, and 88% of your clients trust online reviews just as much as they would a friend or a peer. So um, we've all been trained by Amazon, right, to trust those online reviews like you see down below there with stars and with a little bit of uh, a little bit of information about why they chose that that particular firm, um, and eighty seven percent won't even consider a firm that has low ratings. So your clients, again, we've all we all shop online. We do you know we pick our restaurants based on based on Yelp and based on the number of stars and based on what are you know other people who have ha who have um, you know, been to that restaurant, or in this case, have used this firm, we trust those reviews. We've just, it's, it's part of the culture we live in. It's part of how we make the selection on different services and products that we're gonna use. And it's really no different when people are selecting which firm they're gonna use. So if, you're, if you haven't really thought a ton about reviews, it's really something that you should be thinking about and, and putting a strategy in place uh, for your firm and how you, um, how you want to go about it and 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 manage it, and a couple uh, a couple other interesting thoughts here as well. If you don't, if you haven't seen this, it, this is you know Google's map pack, right? It's it's how we find things these days, right? We we pop open Google Maps or we're in Google and we search for something. Nalini's going to talk, I think, a little bit about this as well. But um, when you this little 
map pack here is seen 500 percent uh more than your website so I, a lot of firms i think spend a lot of time on their website a lot of time um trying to you know make that just right just perfect and the reality is to even get to your site, this is it is getting filtered through Google and through you know the, those reviews and just just like Amazon, you know the the your clients are looking at at the firms that pop up here when they when they search for a particular type of firm, and this firm right here, for example, Goings is likely going to get the call in this scenario, right? Because if you look at um, if you look at you know the reviews here. Um, you know, some of these other firms have, you know, 71 reviews. That's, and that's fine, but pe people are looking for, uh, you know, the right number of reviews and, and, and good ratings. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But even a one star increase in that, in your, your ratings there can equate to a five to 9% increase in revenue, according to Harvard Business Review. So reviews, so the, the point of the story here is reviews matter. They matter to your business, they matter to your future business. Um, and it's definitely something that you should be be thinking about and and getting those reviews um, I think as we talked about before it, it shouldn't be a passive strategy for you and um, so we'll just walk through kind of the process of, of how easy it is to, to, how easy it can be to get those I think a lot of firms um, in the past have kind of used the strategy of you know send an email out or um ask just ask in person hey would you mind filling out a review and i think sometimes that leaves gaps in that process right for your clients where there's maybe some uncertainty about how how to go about getting you know actually posting a review for you um and i think a lot of us you know we're asked by different organizations to leave reviews and if it's not a simple easy process if there's friction in the process and it, it, we're all busy people we all have you know a, a million things coming into our phones and a million requests every day um if it's not easy they're probably not going to do it and i think the timing as well is in, is is instrumental in how you go about asking for those reviews um but at connect one, one of the things that we advocate for is asking for those reviews via text message um we're, we happen we, we are a text messaging platform and a review management platform so that's that's really kind of what we focus on but text messaging really is an easy way to ask for reviews. It's immediate. If you've had a positive experience, uh, a positive result for one of your clients, it's a really easy way to, you know, in this example here, send them a text message that has a link to where you want them to leave the review. They click, they select where they want to leave a review, pick the number of stars, and they can easily just leave a little bit of text about the experience with without um and it's not it's not a, a labor intensive process for them it's not something that's going to take them you know 10 minutes to do this is a kind of a two you know two or three minute process for them you'll see much better results in the number of reviews that you're actually getting by by just simply again taking taking friction make taking friction out of the process making it really easy for them to do um, and so that's, we definitely advocate for that. And our, our clients tend to see really great results when they do that. Um, and a couple of, just a couple of thoughts before um, I hand it over to Nalini here for, for a moment. Um, but a couple of things that we've seen as far as steps to success with online reviews and in, in, in how you go about getting them. Number one, um, to have a process, take control of the process. Um, don't let your, you know, your, those, those few clients, those, the, you know, the, the smallest number of your clients speak to you and to your organization and to kind of what you're about and who you are. Um, get your, get your best clients to leave reviews for you. Get the ones that are, that have had the best experience um, to write those glowing reviews for you. Hey, Mike. Yeah. So a couple points and then me and then a question we're getting, Absolutely. and I should mention, and I, I should have mentioned this at the start and I, I, I failed. So I apologize, but we want this, this to be interactive. So please ask Absolutely. questions Absolutely. Um, in the little question area. It's on the right-hand side of your screen in the go to webinar area. Just, just type in your questions there and I'll address those to Mike and Nalini. Um, so one, one question that we, we do get a lot and that is coming in, um, what, do you, what do you do with negative reviews? So if you do get a negative review, how do you handle that 
What do you do with that? Do you get on and respond? How do you do that? And then the second question, which is more of a point is, look at that response rate compared to if you were to after like a positive case resolution um, email and just say, hey, leave us a nice review or say it as they leave your office, you're gonna get like a 1% review rate. If you send a text message with that process Mike just outlined, you're gonna get a 35 to 37% review rate, which again is not 100%, but it's you know 35 times greater than 1%. Absolutely. Math. Hashtag Absolutely. math. So, um, but no, like what, how, how do you respond to a negative review? Any best practices there? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's, that's a great question. I think, um, all of us just kind of built into us. <laughs> There's this almost like an automatic response. We want to review and be like, no, you're wrong. You know, we want to respond with, no, you're wrong. Why did you say that? You know, we want, you want to respond with kind of, um, with that type of energy. And I, 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 I don't think that's the right way to respond to a negative review. I think if possible, reaching out to that individual um, that left that review, if, it's, if you're capable of doing that, if you have the information to be able to, to reach out and address the issue that may um, be outstanding with that client and asking them you know, to possibly, you know, if you've resolved that issue to change that review is, is the best case scenario. Um, if that's not possible, even, even if that you, know, you can't reach out and solve the problem and that one star review is going to stay there, having a positive response to every review is really the best case scenario and best practice uh, is, is what we advocate for. Um, your clients will, your, your clients and your potential clients will look at those responses. It's, it's one of the first things they actually look at um when they're when they're looking at your reviews if they if they get in and they actually you know if they get beyond just looking at okay they have 300 reviews and five stars if they if they start to dig into the actual reviews that is the first thing they one of the very one of the very first first things they look at is those responses from the owner of the company um so having some sort of positive response to you know to the tune of hey we're sorry that you had a bad experience please reach out to us we'd be happy to help resolve this issue um, you know, we want to make sure you have a great experience. Something to that uh, tune is really what we've found um, works well. Nalini, have you have you had any experience with that as well? Any, any comments on that? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, for most of you who know about Blue Shark, you know that we are founded by Seth Price, who's also a managing partner at a law firm. So we kind of go with um, what he says for his firm and what he actually does for his own clients, or you know, his own the people who are talking to them and say, hey, you know, we've had a bad experience. He has a very large intake team, but what he says is give yourself that 24 hour waiting period. Exactly what Absolutely. Mike just said. Like you want a guttural response. Of the day. Like, <laughs> no, you're, you're, wrong, you're wrong. Right. But he says, take, yeah, take 24 hours and allow yourself to process it. Really have your team look into what happened. What was the disconnect? And then Seth also says, even if you have an intake team and you can put someone on it to go call this person and try to settle offline before you, you know, the best thing to do is to try to get them to remove the review, right? Talk to them offline, say, here's what we can do to help. And if they can remove that review, that's amazing. They're the only people that can remove it, right? It takes a lot more for Google to get rid of it. But if you can talk to them, that's great. And even, even if you have an intake team that you can pass that along to, sometimes it helps to have the principal of the firm or to have the lawyer that actually worked with them make that call. So I think making sure to take care of the steps you can um, before you just go and respond to it and say, sorry, that was the situation, right? Try to fix it and try to fix it with the right person um, would be our, our little thing that we would say. Yeah, and one thing, another question that we just had that I think is a really good follow-up to that is what, how do you, and I think, Nalini, this might be a great one for you, is how do you respond uh, to a negative review from a person who's not been represented by your firm? That's a good one. So we get that a lot. And the real issues when we come down to it and we look at it, a lot of times um, what we find is the truth is somewhere in the middle. And it may not be that you guys had had signed a contract with them. You're not taking their case. But if someone has gone through your intake process, has called you and talked to anyone there, they're able to leave a review based on the services they receive from interacting with your business. So before we say, hey, this person is not in our CRM or CMS, and it's not a person that I've represented, take an extra look back and see if they have at least spoken to someone in your intake or has spoken to your call answering service, because it counts. 
at that point. So first vet and find out exactly where that person may have interacted with your business. If you truly say there's no interaction there, then you can try to get rid of it by um, escalating it to Google and calling it a spammy review that this person had sent, you know, a malicious review and doesn't even know you and that you can show your, your record to show that that person never called your firm and providing that actual physical evidence of, hey, they're not in my system at all um, on the day that they said they talked to us, that is what can help you get it removed. You have to show the evidence though. Yeah, and I think uh, that's a great point. And I think that one of the follow-up questions was, you know, sometimes um, their firm may get confused with another firm. And so it's probably that, that that scenario that yes, you just discussed where you know, like we have not actually interacted with this person and here's the here's the evidence to that too and then you you forward that along to google to hopefully get that review uh removed yep um one of the other questions that we had was um you know basically the the, the question is can you kind of pre-screen reviews and and so you're you're having conversations with clients kind of post um you know, when you've had some experience with them, some conversation with them, and you ask them specifically, hey, did you have a positive experience with the firm? And then ask them for a review. And I think, yeah, that's a fantastic way to go about that. Um, because if you're talking to somebody and they haven't had a great experience, that gives you a really nice opportunity for for service recovery right there. Because um, you you definitely, if that person is 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 not feeling like they had a great experience, you're definitely not going to want to ask that person for a review at that moment. Maybe once you've solved their issue and they, they, they're feeling better about their experience. Yes. But I think that is actually a really good um, way to, to uh, kind of decide who, who you ask for a review. Cause you're not going to, you, you definitely, not every client is going to be the right, um, the right person to ask for a review. Um, you know, some, some mm -hmm. aren't, some, it, it just is what it is that, People have different mm -hmm. personalities and interactions, and I think um, asking someone who is unhappy for a review is going to lead to kind of what you would expect in a review from that person. Um, any thoughts on yeah. that, Melina? Yeah, the one thing that I would say here is I think a lot of people back in the day had, and you guys might have experience with this, but review gating. So people had said, what's an easy way for me to automate to understand Absolutely. who's a good person to leave a review and not, right? Because I agree, Mike, it has to be the way you just described it. It has to be organic. It has to be Absolutely. your team at your firm chooses who they're going to just send that review to based on your actual experience. But keeping that together and keeping that tracked is is difficult, right? But I think people yes. used to do, and what's not allowed anymore, and I think Mike can speak to this though, is people used to send out an automation. So as soon as you're done uh, handling their case, it would say, hey, did you have a good experience with us? Rank us one to five or something. And, and that question, they if they review. said, yeah. yeah, yeah, if they said one, then they would not be sent to a review. If they said five, they would be sent to leave a review. And so Google actually outlawed um, programs from using that That's review it. gating yeah, and so you can't do that anymore. Don't create an internal process like that, for sure, um, where you're actively asking that in a, in a real platform. Um, yes. But do it what, with what Mike said, yeah. And then, Mike, if you want to talk about that, too. Um, you feel no, about I, I, yeah, complete, I completely about agree. I think it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a, a systematic process <laughs> to, where, yeah. you know, you're, as the lady outlined, where you your your system is automatically doing that um but it, I, I think organically where you're having conversations you're going to know who the right people to ask for reviews are right um just based on your conversations and your inter interactions um and one of the one of the questions was um can you do this through your text messaging service and the, i'm not sure what the, what's that referring what that specifically is referring to but but um that will answer it this way yes you can ask for reviews through our text messaging service. So if you've had a conversation, you've had an interaction, you just had a positive event, let's say you had a really great outcome with a client, um, you know, you just settled a case or whatever the case may be, uh, you can literally just say, hey, I'm gonna send you, would you mind if I just sent you a text review uh, or a text message to, to fill out a review for our firm? You click two buttons and they, they have a, a text sitting in their inbox um, and they click the link just like I showed you before and and, it's really simple for them. It's really easy to get those reviews through that process. So yes, the answer is yes. Um, so Mike, that's that's great for the or for the one-offs, right? Or um, I'm sorry, I didn't know if that was also um, okay there too. But um, 
it works for the one-offs where you can do it in real time very quickly, which is awesome if your lawyers have access to it. But is there also a feature where you can do this scalable? So let's say that That's I true. had my secretary, yeah, my secretary went through this week's intakes and then found the 15 people that we want to send a text to and we've identified them. Is there an easy way to click a button that identifies them as a yes, they're positive in your platform and then you can send them as bulk or something like that? Yeah, so we don't we we do not advocate for bulk text just because text messaging right, right. in bulk there are some uh, legalities around sending text in mass without them opting into something like that. But yes, yep. you can. Uh, you could either tag them in your case management system or um, on our side as the folks that you wanted to reach out to. And yes, so just with just in a matter of minutes, you could very simply do it by just simply clicking on their name, clicking that send review button, and and. So in, in a matter of a, two or three minutes, you could send out that list from the week. So absolutely, yes. Per perfect, that's the question I get often from people who are asking me particularly, like is there a, a platform out there that can actually, I can tag them. So that tag absolutely. is so important that it, it is available on Connect. Yeah, so it's, yeah, and, and, and we have clients to do it a lot of different ways, but yes, um, you can do it on our side, on, on your case management. It, it, there's, we, we try to, we try to accommodate <laughs> depending on your internal process. And so our case, our uh, client service team will, will uh, they work with each one of our clients to make sure they have a process that works for them. But yes. Um, awesome. Yeah. And I, I'm going to, so just a couple last, I think McKay touched on, on um, most of, of what we've got here on this slide, but I think the last point is just having a repeatable process. I think you, you and I have both touched on this a little bit, Nalini, already in, in just our, our, our conversation here. But I think having some sort of process, you know, whether it's, you know, as you outlined at the end of the week, we know everybody who, you know, we want to want to send um, send requests for reviews out to, but building and, and structuring processes around, okay, we know we want, you know, this number, you know, this many reviews this week. In our platform, you can actually have metrics for your team around the number of re reviews that you're asking for and getting. So you can actually keep track of that in our system. But having a process where you know, okay, here, here's our goals, here's, what, here's who we want to reach out to uh, is, is helpful to make sure you get the reviews that you actually um, want. And I think we want to step into now on, on Nalini's side, really how to actually take those reviews and turn them into something, um, leverage those on your website into something powerful to actually get more clients and, and, and be a useful tool for you in the future. So I want to let Nalini jump here in here on that. Perfect. And so a lot of what I'm going to talk about here, and I know a lot of people have seen you present before, have said, you know, you, you get very granular. I'm going to try to do an overview of this where these are things that you can actually do on your own. Um, and it does go with a little bit of coding, but if you look at the Google support pages, and I've also included a link at the bottom of this, and I can send that out after, it will show you step by step on how to actually make sure that Google sees that you have placed these great reviews on specific pages on your website. So the way that I want to kind of describe and, and work on this is let's talk first about, um, you know, what is a, a review rich snippet? Where, where can you actually see from the consumer side of things that these reviews are placed in a place that blows their mind, makes them want to continue to actually use you, right? So your SEO has done well. But people have searched for a keyword. I've searched for a car accident lawyer. Um, in Raleigh, for example, right? You can see here that the result will look like this. You're going to have these little stars down at the bottom, and this is also only going to be specific to very specific practice area pages. Your home page is not going to be a place that Google is actually going to show these stars on. So very first and foremost, one of the biggest things I would say is don't waste your time doing coding on your home page for these specific uh, reviews. You want to find these reviews and you want to determine what practice area did you help the person with and then you want to take those reviews and put them on the relevant page on your website, right? So it's almost adding an extra piece of trust for Google to see, hey, I know what I'm talking about in car accidents. I know what I'm talking about in DUIs or divorces, but here now are two reviews from people who have mentioned that particular practice area, right? You're going to put them on very specific pages. And then what happens is Google's able to take that information because you've put coding on the back end to signal that to the bot. 
And when someone searches for a DUI lawyer or a divorce lawyer or a car accident lawyer, not your brand, but is actually searching for a service that they need from you, your results are going to actually show and have these little stars that make it more compelling that someone would want to click in. Oh, well, look, they have, they've gotten a five star on this particular topic. Let me go into that page and see what, what's going on, right? Um, so it's just really making your review or your, your search result look prettier. Um, one of the things that's really important is the way that, that these review rich snippets came about. So back, um, a few years ago, Google started allowing, if you put a nice review on your page, on your, let's say, divorce page, right? They would pull a part of the actual review into the search result here. So you'd have like the first sentence of what Meg H said about you. And it was nice, but what Google quickly realized was, okay, well, of course you're going to put your five star ratings and your great reviews on your website, right? So it's a little biased when they're only getting the good reviews. So Google kind of took a step back and said, we're not gonna necessarily put up all of your great five-star reviews and show you um, the actual review and the search result. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna allow you to do aggregate average rating. So this is a particular type of information that you give them. And what you have to do is you have to point Google to your Google My Business so that they can actually see the cumulative average of your reviews or when you take all of the different reviews that you've put on your pages across all of your practice area pages, you have to take what the average would be of those particular reviews, right? So if you're going to tell Google in the back end on your coding that you have a 5.0, then you have to make sure that all of the different reviews you've placed on your site actually average to that, right? If you accidentally put something that was a 4.9 review, but it was ranting and raving and had the best words ever, then you're going to have to make sure to say in your coding that it's not a 5.0, right? It's a 4 point whatever it is. So that's one thing that you need to be truthful and make sure you're giving enough backup evidence for Google to actually show this information. Um, uh, I've kind of given you a little bit of tips and talked about it generally here, but the the history too, like I said, they got more selective right now. We're at a point where they're going to show these stars as long as all of your information is correct. But one of the biggest things that I've seen since June 20th to now um, is I'm often looking at, you know, our clients and, and showing as examples for references when I'm talking to people about our services. And I've noticed that a lot of the review snippets or a lot of the um, FAQ schema as well, which is, you know, when you look up a, a car accident lawyer and then you see the search result and it's got these cool little little three um, questions there right in the search results that you can click and you can read the question and the answer. It's really nice and interactive. A lot of those have disappeared from the search result just since June 20th. And what we've seen is that Google is starting to be a little bit more selective where they're working on something right now. So I would caution people if you guys have had um, historically have seen the five stars show up there and you're not seeing it anymore. It's not the end of it. It's not that it's disappeared forever, but Google is going through a little bit of a weird um, restructure right now where they are showing them hit or miss randomly. Um, and that usually signals to me that they're getting more guidance written down for us to use. So they're, they're testing things and then in, you know, a month they're going to say, hey guys, Here's the updates we came up to the review snippet. So something to keep your eye on. And here's what you actually need to do correct in order to see it show up in the search result. Um, right now, what Google has said is while we know that we have moved from, you know, 20% of your search results used to have it, but now only 14% are showing, keep doing what we've always told you to do. So don't stop putting this information on your site. Keep doing it, it will come back eventually. Um, and then I just have some quick pictures here to kind of give you guys the visual of what we just talked about. So I said your homepage, you don't have to put your, your coding, you're not trying to do schema and structured data on the back end there to teach the bot anything, but everyone should still definitely utilize a space on your homepage to have something like this. Pick the best reviews that you have and put them here where people can scroll through them. Try to try to get a variety of different practice areas that people have helped with. If you're, you know, if you're criminal, then get a DUI, a drug, and maybe a, a bribery, something like that, right? Just try to varietize. Um, this is where it really matters, though. You want to be on your actual practice area page. So this is, you can see the DC DUI lawyer page. And down at the bottom of that page, as I scrolled, we have a big box, and it has 
this one particular review that's there that says, hey, we're really happy with what you've done. We put the coding on this particular page so that when the bot reads the coding, it sees that we have a review, and then this is what the result is. When you search DCDUI lawyer, this DCDUI lawyer page pops up as one of the results, and you're seeing that you, you know, the stars are there, and it's showing you exactly, you know, when that review was left and, and things like that. More information can come in. So that's basically, you know, it for me in terms of the how you can use your reviews, what's going on with Google. Don't be alarmed if you go in and you actually do this for yourself. You try to put the review um, schema and, and coding there that Google tells you to just copy and paste into the back end. It will hit. It's going to be important. And the only time you have a chance to show is if you're doing everything correctly on the back end. So always keep your ducks in a row and then hope for the best with Google, right? You have no chance if you're not doing that. But I, from here, you know, it's really, okay, well, I know what I can do with the, the reviews, but how do I find those reviews? How do I make sure I'm keeping track of that? And that's what Mike will, will be able to talk a little bit more about. Where do Absolutely. I segment and figure out those great reviews to use? Absolutely. Okay, and Melanie, I had, a, I had a quick question for you. So I'm going to jump back here. So this is this is a mm -hmm. client. That, uh, this is a, a question that that I get frequently here. So with it, with this type of mm -hmm. review here, you've got somebody who's got a case that's like a DUI or a criminal defense case where they may be not so willing to post a review that has their name on it. How do you how do you mm -hmm. handle that um, in requesting those? Or, or how do you what do you yeah. advocate there with your clients? Yeah, and you can see here actually, right? The byline is by happy client. And the way yeah, that so we've created this, right, in this structure, you notice that we didn't just copy and paste the, the copy of the, the review. You actually put who it's by, the title you want it to be. All of that information is is basically structured by how the coding reads on the back end. When you copy That's and right. paste the coding, it, it wants to know who it's by, what the title, but you don't have to put a name, right? You can absolutely put um, happy client, client in this city, if you want to get a local, you know, name Absolutely. tossed in there. Um, I think it is very important that you bring up that topic with criminals specifically and bankruptcy. So I've got Absolutely. some bankruptcy lawyers on here. A lot of you guys are, are amping up because your next few years are going to be pretty busy um, and nobody's going to want to share to the public, hey, I went bankrupt, right? And this lawyer helped me. <laughs> um, what, I, what I try to do though is, you can do this. You can tell them, hey, you don't have to put your name. Um, you don't have to have your name associated with your Gmail account when you put it on, on the GMB when you leave the review. Further, if you want to just give me a review that I can use on my website, I can keep you anonymous. Um, and then you can actually put these nice keywords in the description. But if you flip this, right, and the people don't want to um, put the keywords as to what you help them with, but they, their name is connected to their Gmail on the Google My Business review, then think about it from this perspective. Their name is going to show up. But why don't you guide them to be able to leave a review that says something like, blah, blah, attorney really helped me with my legal service. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Use very broad, generic terms where they don't have to get specific and be embarrassed. But those words like legal services still helps a ton when it comes to Google reading your reviews and, and identifying important words that are connected to your business. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and I, I, yeah. That, that's perfect. We've had a couple questions on that as well. Um, and he said, one of the one of the folks on here said, "I'm a bankruptcy attorney. I try to get them to agree to initials, Mister <laughs> or Mister or Mrs. You know, something to that effect." Yeah, word. that's a great, that's yeah. a great idea. I like that a lot. Yeah, and yeah. that that makes it a little bit more legitimate. But I think it's also fine once you put something up like this, and it's a very specific. It's very long. Um, review, it doesn't look fake if you say happy client. And I think a lot of people, especially when you think about who are you appealing to, you're appealing to someone else who's got a criminal case, right? They're yeah, probably they happy you read happy yes, client. Absolutely. Yeah, they yeah. don't want to see a name. They're going to be a little thrown <laughs> off. If they say, oh, shit, I don't want this guy to put my name on the site, okay. right? Yes, yes. So it helps. Yeah. Yeah. It also helps when you think about absolutely. your audience. Yep. No, absolutely. That's yeah. That's that's fantastic. Because we, and just just as, as as you probably do, we get those questions quite a bit, and I think the, you know, we'd want to make sure we we, no, we get that information out here as well. So, fantastic. And and yeah. we love all these questions that are flowing in. So if there's any, you know, is there any others? Feel free to um to to send them. And there are a few others that I haven't gotten to that I will 
um, just at, at the end. Um, so if, if your question hasn't been answered, sit tight. Um, there's a couple that I think um, we'll tie in a little bit better here at the end. So, so bear with us as we uh, get through the last few slides here. Um, yeah. And a couple, just a couple, kind of uh, last thoughts from from our side from Connect. Um, having a platform that helps manage your um, all of your reviews, we've we obviously advocate that for that. That's what we do. But our clients find that having so this is a, this is just a good example of what our this is what our back end looks like for our clients when they're managing their reviews. You can see. They could easily ask for reviews here by just simply, you know, selecting which template they want, typing in a name and a number. You can actually, it's even more simple from the text component in the inbox. You just simply, simply click on the client's um, profile and click, uh, you know, the star button, which asks them for a review and it sends out that template. Um, but this pulls in the reviews from Google and Facebook. You can see all of your reviews. You can see the metrics around the reviews. You can see, actually see the content of the reviews and actually, you can actually as we've ad advocated before, respond to those reviews because your clients will, um, will or your potential clients as well, will look at those reviews. But this lets you see all that information in one spot. And you can even have metrics here around, you know, your team and what their goals are for getting reviews from, from clients and things of that nature. So we definitely advocate for this. It's a really nice way to kind of see, see your online reputation in one, one, platform here and one and get all the analytics around it so that's that's what it looks like on our back end and just a couple a couple of kind of final thoughts here around you know what your clients want to see as you're out there thinking about you know your strategy and about your process this is really you know bright local did a survey and this is what they found when they ask people, you know, what are you really looking for in a review when you're, when you're out there analyzing, you know, potentially selecting, a, you know, a service organization or a product, um, you know, what are you looking for? And a couple of things really stood out. Um, number one is the quality of the rating, right? What, that, that was the most important factor. So five stars are preferred, but they're, you know, again, we've all been trained by Amazon. We all want to go out there and find the products that have five star reviews, right? Or the services. Um, recency is really important as well. Co consumers tend to disregard reviews that are over 90 days old. So they just won't, they're not going to read them. So you have to continually be working um, and managing your online reputation. And so, you know, again, back to the, the thought of having a process in place to continually ask for reviews and keep that reputation um, fresh and recent is really important. And then quantity. Um, oftentimes when we start to work with firms, they, as, as Nalini mentioned before, they have a few reviews. Most of them are negative because they've just been kind of organically letting it happen. Um, but, you know, and then they may have one or two that are positive and it's honestly, it's probably their mom and their brother. Right, and and consumers see right through that as well. If you have ten reviews and they're all positive, they just kind of assume they're relatives that have left those reviews. So, a minimum of fifty is really where you need to be to kind of um, be taken seriously, and then one hundred and fifty is ideal, and that's really what drives a better conversion rate um, from people who are seeing you online and then going to your website and reaching out to you. Um, hey, hey, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. What one thing to mention here, and I think recency can't be stressed uh, enough. Absolutely. I think sometimes people think, okay, I've got a hundred reviews. I can wait now. It's I this I think speaks those. to what, yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think this speaks to what Nalini said, which is you've got to have some sort of process so that you're not having to go get 200 reviews in a month. You can actually just say, okay, we know every month we're going to get 30. Every yeah. month we're going to get 30. That's the repeatable process that you've got to build. It can't be just like this rush. A lot of businesses will do this rush to get a bunch of reviews and then not think about it again for another year. The yes. trick is just do establish a process that will work for you and your business. And using I yeah, and do it every month. Do it with every client that's successful yeah. and and build it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And Nalini, any thoughts on that from your side? No, I think that that truly covers a lot of what um exactly what I would say, right? It's it's having a plan, it's staying with it, it's everything that you've echoed. So I wouldn't necessarily add anything to what you guys have said there. 
Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And, but I think, yeah, having, having that process is, a, is, is key to that. Um, you for know, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, and then lastly, before we kind of jump into the, um, to the few, few questions here, um, just reiterating here, reviews matter. So I won't, I won't run through the stats here again, but reviews matter to you and your future business. Your, your clients are, are, they are looking at them and they, you're being judged based on, on those reviews and you will continue to be um, in the future. They're not, you know, reviews aren't going away. They're part of um, the world we live in. And so um, we definitely want to see everybody who, who's, who's on the line here. Hopefully you're, you know, you, you, you can take away something from the presentation today, one or two little nuggets that you can implement into your business. And obviously we both, uh, Nalini from Blue Shark and, and, and us here at Connect are, are happy to help and would love to answer any questions that you have that may be specific. Um, to you know, to, to your particular firm and your situations, we're happy to um, to answer them, and we'll we'll put up our contact information in just a moment here. And there's a few slides that have come in. Um, one of the questions is, why does Google show a lower total reviews compared to the actual number of reviews? Seventy count, seventy two actual. Um, is that on your um, Google My Business? Is he talking about that too? That would be that would be my guess, Nalini. Yeah, she said yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. So um, a couple of things on that. Back in from March to I think it was mid May, Google had turned off its uh, review uh, its review platform for people to even leave new reviews, right? And so once these re new reviews started coming in, the reason they did that was because a lot of Google support was sent home during Corona and they did not have hands on deck to be able to handle the support if there were questions or people said, I got a fake review. So they just turned it off. Um, that was also probably good in retrospect because we realized that people who were leaving reviews during Corona were people who were upset about everything. Absolutely. And so they were yes. leaving negative reviews. Yeah. So what happened was people could leave a review. It just wouldn't show up on the front end. So when May came around and all of these reviews that had happened in those three months were pushed live on your Google My Business, I noticed across a lot of different practice areas, across a bunch of different states and regions, those numbers weren't matching up and it was a glitch. So it was just a matter of, as long as you can see them, that's that's fine. But Google's still trying to catch up with all those old reviews, um, having them show on the front end. And so the other question I have too is, is it actually on the front end showing that you have 70 reviews, but then when you look, you have 72? Or are you seeing the number on the back end of your Google My Business where it says 72, and then you're seeing 70? Because if that's the case, sometimes in the back end, you are seeing that someone has reviewed you before the front end catches up. It gives you a day sometimes to actually look at that new review you have before it puts it live on the front end, which is actually kind of nice. If it's a bad review, it gives you time to go deal with it before it goes on to the front end of your Google My Business. So a couple of different things could be happening there. Yeah, that, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, and we've seen that quite a bit as well. A couple other questions uh, mm -hmm. have come in. One says, I'm a solo family lawyer and I'll be glad to handle 30 cases a year. So 150 reviews won't happen quickly. What universe of lawyers are generating the volume of reviews you suggest? <laughs> and um, and I, that's, a, that's a great question. And I think, you know, we're, we're not advocating and saying you have to have 150, but I think starting the process is really the key. Because even if you only see yeah. 30 cases a year, you know, getting, you know, a third of those to leave you or re a review would be fantastic, right? Um, yeah. And I think that yeah. that should maybe be the metric you're you're looking at rather than thinking I need 150 reviews. Personally, if I if I, if if right. one of my client managers were working with you, I think they would advocate for that as well. And the one thing I would say too is I think that the benefit a lot of times for the smaller, the one off, I'm a solo law firm. Um, is not necessarily the number that you're trying to get every month, but the number of people you're touching asking for that review. And that's where those review platforms really help you to maintain that database, to keep following up with people in an automated way or an easy way for yourself, right? So you're gonna have X number of clients, only a third, like Mike said, is going to actually leave you that review. But the the real help here is making sure you're touching as many people as possible so that you can get that one third that actually do the review. Absolutely. Right? Um, I would say the most important what I see is when we build out a brand new Google My Business, we say 10 is the magic number. 
once you can get 10 reviews, you start to be a real Google My Business to Google. And then from there, it's, it's about making sure you're setting a realistic goal for yourself based on what you bring in of clients every month. So it's less about saying, hey, you know, Mike was giving you a, a, um, an idea and he was saying like, here, this is just for, for what we would say would be your strategy, not necessarily the actual number, but Absolutely. keep consistent. That's what he's trying to say too, is like, hey, if you're going to get two reviews every month, then that's great, but make sure you're getting two reviews every month. You don't just spike and get 10 one month because you did and something then crazy and then you go back to, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's pick your own, pick your own, what makes sense for your business and then do it, um, do it regularly and consistently. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another question came in that says, what is the minimum requirement of work to get a review? Someone left my firm a five-star review the other day just because they liked how thorough our website was. What about asking uh, visitors for a review or giving out a free book or guide and later asking for, uh, and, well, and later asking for a review? So, um, I think the question there is, hey, is there some minimum amount of work that we need to do? And could you maybe incentivize people if you gave out content for free and then later ask them for a review? Is that kosher? Any thoughts yeah, on that? And I, don't, I don't know what you would say, but I absolutely say yes. 100%. Yeah. Here's, here's the, the pro and the con of it, right? So if you're going to put in the time and effort to create a resource like that, that's the point of it is to get more people engaged with your brand. And as Absolutely. long as someone has been engaging in your brand, they can leave a very real review, right? They can talk about how knowledgeable you are on something because they've gotten all this help that did help them fix whatever situation they're in, right? Um, so I think, yes, yeah, absolutely find a way that if you're going to, um, let's say you have a feature on your website that says, hey, download this book. When they download and they put their information, it probably goes directly into your MailChimp if your integration is done right or to your whatever system you use for emailing, right? And you should set up an automatic situation that touches them again right just so you can keep track of all the people who are in your sales cycle but then you want to use your platform to make sure that the people who have downloaded that in that month are touched and asked for a nice review you know you text them through connect or whatever you do i think 100 percent. the thing is you want balance so you don't want a hundred reviews of people who have only read a book from you and have not used you for your services, right? You want to make sure that when people go to your Google My Business and they look at your reviews, that there is a nice balance of, okay, well, there's not just all clouded with this person just talked to them one time. I want to see some substantive um, reviews that say, I, I worked with this person for a year and they really helped me resolve my case, right? So just make sure you're not doing all of it that way, but definitely use it. Definitely use it. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would, I, I think, you know, if, if you're giving away content for free on your website, that's valuable content to people and people are, are getting enough value out of it to where they've, you're already seeing it where they're getting enough value out of it to leave you positive reviews. I think, yeah, definitely leverage that. I just, as, as Nalia mentioned, I don't think you want all of your, you don't want most of your, of your reviews leaning towards that. I think you, you want to have a good mix there. But absolutely, yes. I think get as much value out of that as you can. Um, Mike, why don't we do one more question um, before we close here? We're getting to about uh, 10 minutes to the top of the hour. So why don't, we, why don't we do one more if you've got another one in the queue there? If not, I'm seeing a couple as well. So go ahead. Yeah, if you want to fire off a couple there, that'd be great. All right, so one one more question on the review um, usage, Nalini, that we're getting is in terms of actually like using them physically on your website do you recommend having like a page where you summarize reviews or like just list reviews like i've seen customer quote pages where people will just throw like just lists of customer quotes how do you actually recommend people using them on their website yep absolutely and i was actually going to save that as my one takeaway too if you're not going to do the individual practice area pages where you take a specific review that's on that topic and put it there and then do the coding on the back end, the least um, work, the easiest thing to do is to just have a page dedicated that you call testimonials, right? So under your about us or right off of your main menu, have something that says testimonials, reviews, what are our clients saying? And then you can dump all of your good reviews on there in a pretty way, right? You can have them sorted by, uh, by practice area or whatever you want to do it. This 
type of page is not going to be something that Google's going to read the actual coding on in the back end because it's not connected to a practice area, right? You're not necessarily going to do schema, but it will work wonders for people who are surfing your, your website to just learn more about you. And further, something I think that can be used if you have a testimonial page, when your intake team or you talk to a new person and they are on the cusp of signing with you, but they need that second touch, have something where you follow up in a week and you send them just a link directly to your testimonials page. You can use it as part of your sales cycle to sign somebody. So it's, it's valuable in many different ways for the consumer who's on there just randomly searching about you and also for that extra push to say, hey, look at all of these. Maybe they don't know how to look up your Google My Business, but they can certainly click on a simple link to a nice page and then it puts them on your site where they can learn more about you. Um, I would, I would awesome. definitely that's say, a great, that's yeah, a great the testimonial idea. page is great. I love yeah. that. And that's I, easy. I think, uh, yeah, and it's super exact. That's what I was going to say is it's really simple, and I think it just builds um, builds uh, a level of trust that you would have yeah. with anybody. Yeah, yeah. credibility. That's the word I was looking for, credibility. <laughs> um, well, awesome. Well, th this is great. M Mike and Nalini, thanks for taking the time to do this. Before we end here, any final parting thoughts? Um, Mike, let's go to you first, and then uh, – um, save save Nalini's comment for last. But any final takeaways that you hope you hope someone if if they're not going to remember one thing from this webinar, what would it be that you would want them to? If if they're going to remember only one thing, what would that thing? Be? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think uh, uh, reviews are you know they're not going away. They're important. I think the the one thing I, I hope you take away today is take friction out of the process of getting those reviews right. Because if you if it's hard for your clients to leave reviews, they will not do it. Um, you, you've probably seen that in the past with some of you know a lot of the clients that we work with. They've tried things like asking or emails or or just whatever the case may be, and they they just don't seem to get reviews. Texting get texting is an easy way to do that. Having a platform um, to make that easy is uh, we think instrumental. So if you're, and if you need help with that, feel free to reach out, but I think make the process easy for them and they will do it. It would be the my, my kind of one parting thought. Awesome, Nalini, what about you? I think once you have gotten that just completely streamlined and you've gotten people leaving you the reviews, I would say I am the person that is going to stress the importance of the Google My Business um, aspect yeah. of, of reviews for the SEO aspect. But beyond that, I would challenge you and I would tell you to absolutely find other ways that you can use these reviews to help get you more leads, whether that's online or offline, right? So like I said, that testimonials page and sending that out, but also if you're still in an industry or in a practice area that sends out um, direct mail, right? Maybe your elder law trust in the States or something like that, and you're doing flyers, make sure you're putting some of these these awesome testimonials on your flyers. If you're doing paid ads, try to do a paid ad that's just a testimonial. See how it works for you. You don't, don't put information about yourself, just put literally one of your best reviews there with a picture and see what people think about when they see what someone said about you. So use them for as many aspects as you can and as many marketing channels. It's gonna help. That's great, that's great. Awesome, well this has been fantastic. Thanks for taking the time. Um, we really appreciate it. I know that um, everybody's busy. I know, Nalini, you were saying that you guys at Blue Shark are the busiest you've ever been in terms of bringing on new law firms as clients. And I know at Connect, we've had uh, the craziest quarter and uh, we've ever had in our history. So it's 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 been an interesting and busy time for everybody. And then everybody on the call, thanks for really taking some time out of your day and joining us. So we appreciate it. We'll make the recording available to you as well. Um, so have a wonderful day and a wonderful week, everyone. Um, go out there and, and crush it. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks.